Heavens above, heavens above, we have gone drippy and ambient and wonderful. And Ilya is back from Game Changer Audio. Did you just fly in this morning? You said it. Look at that. This is amazing. What a mini world we live in. Yeah. Um, well, look, it's lovely to see you again. Looking yeah. sharp, yeah. right? Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for, you know, the invitation. Not at all. Not at all. Well, look, we got a little bit of a glimpse at these back in January at the NAMM show, but it was very noisy there. And uh, I guess you've had six months since then to sort of really finesse what's going on. And it's a much quieter environment mm -hmm. to, to find out about them. So what have we got here? Auto chorus, auto delay and auto reverb. Lots of sockets on them, looks a bit Euro racky in a pedal format. I like to think I have no idea what I'm talking about now, but um, tell us what these are supposed to be. Yeah, uh, exactly. Just like you said, uh, the first, like, I think the last time we saw each other was six months ago at NAM, And at the time we were presenting this as the concept, as a concept. It was called the Mod Series at the time. But since then, we've decided to go for the auto kind of theme. So the, uh, the basic idea here is not exactly uh, to try and, you know, gateway drug people into Eurorack, but uh, it's, m uh, it's more like uh, kind of we're taking the, the main operating principles of the, that's kind of uh, common in synthesis which is controlling parameters with control signals. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically this kind of Eurorack style patch bay is that we would like to, we would like to say that it's the most straightforward uh, kind of interface that allows you to connect things like from one another, to make connections, to make parameter changes that uh, without any menu diving, without any like holding something and pressing something down and so on. So it's kind of like this patch based system is the most straightforward and in a way the most like kind I'm of analog instant, so I'm uh, I'm instant way of creating a connection between two parameters. I'm going to guess that 99% of guitar players watching this have absolutely no idea mm -hmm. what Eurorack is why keyboard players and analog synthy people have used it or how you incorporate that into a guitar pedal. Mm -hmm. So let's just, obviously the, you know, this is a chorus pedal, that's a delay pedal, mm -hmm. that's a reverb pedal. That is literally the point at which my knowledge stops and goes, mm -hmm. I now don't understand the point of anything else in these. So could you explain for yeah. me please in terms that a simple guitar player will understand. What okay. is the point? With, with pleasure, absolutely. <laughs> so this is why I, you know, uh, this is why I've got the suit on, this is why I'm here. So, but also this is why we built this, this format in the first place. So uh, one way of putting it that works really well for me and which was the inspiration for me, like when uh, kind of coming up with the concept with our team is that, for example, the chorus. I love, I like a chorus mm -hmm. effect. But the thing about the chorus effect that I don't like is that it's like, it's kind of a, like a light, imagine a light switch, you switch it on. Yeah. The chorus is, starts going off, yeah. you know. Switch it on uh, and then switch it off and the, the chorus effect disappears. Yep. 
So for this auto chorus, we've added the dynamics and the pitch tracker engine, which is a very sophisticated kind of signal analyzer that has a very good idea, basically, of uh, what's happening with your instrument if you're playing dynamics and your note choice. Mm -hmm. And it's and you get to use these patch cables and this patch bay design. With the help of this patch bay and with these patch cables, you can connect, basically, your playing dynamics to the rate of the course, so that it doesn't just go wub, 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 wub at a set rate all the time. So the so, harder I play, I can... So exactly. So the idea is that to create uh, dynamically uh, flowing effects that kind of uh, become more connected to the way that you're playing, to the nuances of your playing. So instead of having a delay that's just ta -ta 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 on all the time, you can say, for example, I want a slapback delay, but if I go on the higher notes, I want the, like a, a few more repeats. Okay. So in a strange way, in my personal opinion, like I view this product, uh, like this line of products, as not very experimental and not very crazy, they're actually very practical because, for example, for the reverb, for the delay and for the chorus, most of these settings uh, and most of the things that the patch bay offers is kind of this dynamically responsive could, relationship. Could we very simply demonstrate that then so that people can... I'm, I'm intrigued yeah. to kind of hear sure, sure, sure. on one of the pedals how so, I could... I mean, doing the, yeah, doing the depth or the speed maybe is probably more obvious, isn't it, on the chorus? Uh, Absolutely. So, for example, let's start with the chorus and let's get a basic chorus sound first. So I'm going to play softly for a sure. bass. So what we have here, you have these, uh, the, you have these two light bars on each pedal. The, the one on the left is the indicator of your uh, playing dynamics. Mm -hmm. And whenever you switch your guitar or you you know, uh, change your setup or something, there's a calibration process. So give okay. me a, like a loud strum. So now the, this chorus, like it knows like the, the kind of like dynamic range of your instrument. Uh, being soft to hard, yeah. So okay, now as you play, you can yeah. see, you can, you can kind of see your playing strength indicated here. Mm -hmm. And here with the dynamics knob, we have a threshold point, which is this kind of moving I dot see. here. Yeah. So what you can do is you can say, I'm going to place this dot in the center position, mm -hmm. roughly, and I'm going to connect the dynamics output to the input level. Or, for example, let's do the depth of the chorus. Okay. So let's decrease the depth of the chorus to zero. Mm -hmm. And the small knob here is going to indicate what starts happening to the value once we cross this once point. Once we go over that, I see. And for this example, I'm going to put the chorus into rise mode, which is mm -hmm. a more like lush flowing kind of thing. So, so if I play soft, we get not too much depth. If I play hard, we get more depth. In this depth. example, that... zero depth, and right, the okay. depth is going to increase. So, so let's, let's give it a shot. It, it works, absolutely. I guess you, you, as a player, you need to develop um, some creative ideas into your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess the, the principle works exactly. Mm. If I play soft, there's no depth to the chorus. If I pick harder, there's depth to the chorus. Interesting. Okay, let's uh, take another one of mm -hmm. these cables. There's a bunch of them that come with every pedal. So if you've never seen stuff like this, don't worry. It's all pretty simple. It's just mm -hmm. a small jack jack cable. And the design, by the way, the shape of these pedals is designed so that you can, yeah, you, can't break you know, you things, can bash yeah. them with your foot, step on it, and yeah. the cables are in, the, in that like recessed area. So now what we're also going to do, we, we are taking a second output from the dynamics, and we're also going to make the chorus go slightly faster and deeper. Okay. So just to tr so see same how idea. that going to go slower. And now I can go over 
ridiculously fast. Okay. Like, uh, but yeah, just try and open it up fully. Okay, I, obviously this is a silly example, no, but, but... it's a great demonstration of the uh, possibilities that this now begins to open up. Particularly, I'm assuming what we could do is have one of these as a master sort of control of dynamic and then begin to trigger yeah. other changes. So there's different lengths of cables that come with these, right? And you can go crazy, like say like, oh, I want this one track the pitch and affect the reverb and so on. But in, in this case... Could we go the other way? Could we have lots of reverb when I'm playing quietly and then to have less reverb when I hit loudly? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, like, so super simple. So, like, so here, like, again, we can do the playing dynamics. Just give me, yeah. like, one strum. Oh, hang on. Which is Sorry. the, like... So now this pedal also is calibrated. So this is cool also to do on the fly. Mm -hmm. For example, you want to just change the sensitivity, click, click, do like this, and now it's different sensitivity. But you can all always see the headroom like being displayed on this left bar here, the dynamics bar. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so what was your example? So was like there? lots of reverb if I'm playing softly, yeah, sure. and then less if I hit loudly. So we, I'm going to just form a connection between the dynamics and the level. And this knob here, is the main kind mm -hmm. of like input level for the reverb. And then the smaller knob is the direction in which it goes. Like uh, it's, it's going to turn it down automatically yes. uh, as soon as we cro start crossing this threshold point. So give it a shot. So we should have lots of. So there's going to be chorus yeah. adding, but uh, reverb is going to be dropping. So okay, so Another interesting thing is that the level knob on each one of these pedals has, uh, you can, it can be either be set into input mode, where it means it's the input level. Mm -hmm. So basically you can think of it as like whether or not the signal goes into the engine. And you can also set it to mix mode, mm -hmm. which means that here it's going to be completely dry and here it's going to be wet only. So for example, now the pedal is in mix mode, the reverb. I'm going to turn the chorus off for a sec, mm -hmm. so we just can focus on one thing. So the, now the reverb, like we're going to be hearing just the just the reverb, just the wet signal, right? And now I'm going to switch on the auto foot switch, and the louder strums are going to automate towards the dry signal. Okay. So you can create these interesting gating effects. It's, I mean, I, I, it's definitely one of those pedals that, this is not the kind of pedal that you go, right, I've got a gig tonight and I need to buy a reverb pedal, so I quickly rush out to the store. This is definitely a creative tool that I think you've got to find. I would imagine Eurorack users, because presumably this will take a line input as well as a guitar input. Yeah. Right? And these are, I mean, I, again, I don't know loads about Eurorack, but I see the 
I see the little mini rack, Euro mm. rack stuff, and I'm trying to remember, was it JHS did some versions of their pedals? And they were like twice the price of these. So I'm guessing just as a, just as an alternative to Euro rack equipment, these will be popular with keyboard players. And Well, I would say that the, um you basically my answer would be is that you already have a reverb pedal mm -hmm. and you already have a chorus and yeah. you already have the basic delay and so yeah. on so here it's about um just this is very just it's about like excitement and being really interesting in my in for me personally so instead of buying like a multi uh, delay thing with 999 preset sounds and and options for example uh, each one of these pedals has four main knobs, which mm -hmm. is level, like for example, of the delay, level, repeat, tone, and time. Mm -hmm. And you can create 163 patches, you know, and you can create the, mil the myriad of effects and so on. And then you can calibrate to different notes. You can also make the effects uh, like uh, responsive to pitch. Mm -hmm and responsive to your playing strength and with just four patch cables yeah as i said you can there are 163 ways of creating a connection within one pedal so you can actually create millions of different uh, musical ideas let me just show you yeah, something you, something silly with the di with the I'm delay i'm interested in that thing that because right now the... i feel that you're you're slightly skeptical you're not well, convinced so let me just uh, i'm not scared let me I, show you a party trick with the yeah, delay I, I, i'm not Skeptical. I think I'm, um, you know, I remember when uh, pedals like the Chase Bliss Mood came out, or there was another um, uh, Prism. Mm -hmm. I think it was a Prism. It's all the ones that go. Yeah, like and, that. and I just accept that I'm probably not playing a style of music mm -hmm. that lends itself to pedals that. that um, create those kinds of guitar tones. I'm doing my best. It's not that I, I think it's just that my default chops yeah. are just like, let's play some Eric Clapton stuff. And it's like, you know, okay, this isn't so really his sort of thing. We can like, let's, let, let me show you something that's just fun. Yeah. And then we can see, we can talk about how useful this is later. So let's choose one note. Yeah. Oh, yes. So just hold this, uh, hold note. Okay, cool. So now this is our center note. Mm -hmm. And all that's gonna happen now is that I'm gonna switch on the auto side and now we will have delays only on that note. So only you can play, on note. play around C. So it's going to pick that note out so in, you can in do, a chord can, or something then, is it? Uh, it's the, the pitch tracker is uh, extremely great at uh, distinguishing single notes. So we've, cal we've kind of pushed for this like single, so it's, it's designed to track single notes. is only delaying on the G. Exactly. But what you can do, Lee, what you can do is that we can add the time parameter to this. So as soon as you open up the delay send with the G, then you have a bit of time like to squeeze in some more notes into it. So it's kind of like you can make the pedal send signal into the delays with the, oh, by playing a G. And regardless of where I play the G, if I play an octave down, that'll still... It's going to be the same. You need to play that same... I've got to play the same, the same okay, G, fine. Yeah. Same, same pitch. Note. Okay, fine. Let's uh, choose a different note. Let's do something high up. Okay. Is that okay? So 
maybe something on the higher strings, okay. like it. And now I'm going to make a region around that note. Just basically two or three frets below and above that note, mm -hmm. that's going to send into the delay. And everything else is going to be dry. So what, so I'm getting, this is the... So for example, you can do some kind of a lick that starts on the, in the middle register, and then when you enter into that place where you have the delay kind of cluster, then you can have an expressive yeah. like a moment with that. Switch on some reverb, just... Has anybody... <laughs> I saw... I... I understand the technology. Um, so I think, you know, being thrust into like, right, cameras rolling, here's the demo, is a tough um, s situation to really feel like you get. I mean, I think maybe you should play because you've obviously had more time with these. Because uh, I, I, I'm sort of, there's, there, we're, we're almost accidentally stumbling across things that I find inspirational and, th and then the next thing we'll stumble across something else and I, for whatever reason I'm just not playing the right thing now, how, to... I think you're doing... Uh, how about like I'm gonna maybe just tell you like some... give you some instructions. Sure. I'm gonna show you some yeah. stranger... like okay. a little bit stranger patches or other, other 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 moves. For sure. Can you... can you... can you play this one? No. Now everything below that note is going to be sent into the delay. Okay. Everything else is get, should be clean. What we can do now, we can say, we can say, let's start really open, cracking that mm -hmm. reverb up when you cross from this zone into that zone. So, for example, again, just simple connection, pitch to um, to level for the reverb, and give me like some note that's like. So everything above this note is going to start increasing the amount of reverb. a line that's diagonal or something. So we've got lots of reverb up here and lots of delay down here. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of very, it's incredibly clever. Cleverer than me. percent David Gilmore if he's watching this he probably isn't it's 100 percent guy oh my god that's what we used to do back in the 70s it's like you know but probably with oh yeah somebody know, standing at yeah, the, a million different stand, uh, standing at the desk and actually yeah. like uh, clocking things yeah. and you know um, automating that's why kind of we went with this like auto uh, naming you know kind yeah of. Um, there must be so there must be something where you can put like a delay on this note so let's, let's no, just do I that. I don't know, I'm making this up now. I'm flying. Let's do that okay. note. Millions of reverb on anything above this note. Oh, 
Well, there's no. Right, you just did that. Right. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I suppose it's. Yeah, I, I, I think some um, people. I mean, I, I already know the names of two or three customers who are going to be 100% on the phone going, give me a deal to buy all three, Lee, because this is, you know, I get it. I totally get that. Um, well, the idea is that like the guitar is an extremely expressive instrument mm. that affects we're used to them being static unless we have some kind of uh, uh, yeah, foot yeah. controller. So you form a simple connect, you form a connection between either basically your yeah. right hand yeah. and or your left hand and the effect, and then it's up to you how crazy you want to go. So, for example, an interesting thing that we can do is we can use playing dynamics to change the the delay rate or something like that. So for example, I'm going to set the delay into gate mode, which means once we cross a certain threshold, it's going to instantly jump to the other value. So now tr give it a shot. So this is going to go from what a certain sp note that I'm going to play or a Just or a uh, dynamic? if you cross, if you st right. yeah, strum it really so hard. We're gonna start I've got, getting I've got all my tone down here. So that's that's a little bit more. Uh, I get. Do you know what? It's unusual. interesting. It's one of the things. Again, it's another kind of pedal demo that I've always felt I've been a bit shit at. Is where you have an expression pedal that you do into mm. to move. And I think it's just because in my brain, the idea of trying to incorporate another part of my anatomy mm. to sort of trigger stuff. I do quite like the idea that with this, I don't have to worry about an expression pedal. I can just literally go do it off of the dynamic of my, you know, strumming hand or, or a note that I play, but it, it, it's still quite alien to me to feel like how I would incorporate this. There's, I, a, I sort there's, of a, mode, the angle. there's a mode here in the pitch tracker mm -hmm. side, which is called tone. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, designed to, instead of tracking the precise note value, mm -hmm. it's designed to track analyze and track the central harmonic, like central frequency. Right. So basically it res it's designed to res be responsive to the tone knob on the guitar or to the pickup selection. So for example, uh, let's <laughs> let's do this. This is also in a kind of like, this should be interesting to you, I think. Sure. So uh, like, uh, let's for example, go um, dark, like neck pickup yeah. and a little bit darker tone. So, okay, we got, we got Just this. Just give me a few strums like that. Now everything brighter than this is going to start opening up the delays. It's okay. It's all, uh, to be honest with you, I, I just think it's, it's, that's what I want to do with this. I want to almost turn the cameras off, sit in a room, pulling patches in and out, seeing where it goes. And I'm fairly certain that at some point or another, a riff will come out or, mm -hmm. a, or a chord sequence will come out that will just take on, a, take on that magic that sometimes you need to just inspire you to write the song you know. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. This is uh, another cool thing here, for example, since the pedal is good at listening mm -hmm. to what you're doing, it's basically, it's 
the whole kind of at least ha like a whole hemisphere of the pedal's brain is designed to like just listen and an to the to the input signal and analyze that mm -hmm. signal and so on. So we've incorporated this thing here that's uh, called track tempo. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing a tap tempo, you can step on both of these foot switches and just do it tick, 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 like that. Oh, okay. And that's going to be the new tempo. So you, you can also try that out. Okay. But now you need to play a brighter note. <laughs> because otherwise we, we've got the delay closed. I haven't got any more brightness to go on here. I should okay. have, uh, but... Um... So now we can we can do in uh, we can just get rid of uh, so we can have like some base amount of delay send and then the bright or for example the lower you go in terms of tone the more it's going to open up. All right. Okay. So. so So we've got loads of reverb when it's bright, loads of echo when it's oh, yeah. uh, dark. Now we've got some kind of, yeah, we've still got the, re the reverb going. Oh, it's, it's, uh, this is, I, I, I sort of feel like the best demos of these are going to be the sort of the playing only, no talking, somebody just finding some really cool way of demoing these. I appreciate that we've got to, you know, you've got to talk to tell people what's yeah. going on, but I think the fun stops when the talking stops and it's I all I think about once we get to patching configurations and mm -hmm. so on, uh, yeah. Uh, I think once we get to patch configuration number 143, then... Uh... Well, I, do you know what I think we should do is, let's just stop talking now. Okay. Let's just, you dial in crazy sounds, I'll do a bit of playing, you can do a bit of playing, maybe even Mr. Pete wants to come in and do a bit of playing, but we just won't talk, we'll just see where it goes, because I think that is, that's what's going to attract people to this, is not talking about what it does, it's hearing the, the possibilities of what it can do. We've had a... a We've decided now to bring in the big guns. So Pete's going to come in and play uh, whilst Ilya just sort of fiddles around with some settings. I'll put links below to this. I would strongly suggest that going over and checking out the Game Changer website as well, because I'm sure they'll have lots of cool players playing on here as well. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Lee. Thank you all for, for watching. And uh, as I said, I'm pretty sure that the viewers will be polarised into two camps, uh, some of whom switched off after five yeah. minutes, and the other ones are going like, this is the best thing I've ever seen, ever, and we'll want to find out more. Yeah, like, so, nastiest comment win wins a shirt <laughs> no, or something. Do that. All no. right, man, well, look, take it easy. It's lovely to see you. And uh, here comes Pete. See you later. <laughs>